Welcome to The Bo Show. On February 3rd, I had the unique opportunity to view the latest SpaceX Starlink 47 Falcon 9 rocket launch from Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. It was precisely at 1.13 p.m. without any give or take in between, and it was fascinating to witness in person. SpaceX, which really stands for Space Exploration Technologies, is a privately funded company that was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk, the same guy who founded Tesla, the sleek electric cars that you see on the road. If you've seen Teslas or you've ever been in one, you know how futuristic and progressive they are, especially with the butterfly doors and giant display screens. Musk's goal in creating SpaceX was to reduce the cost of space transportation to eventually colonize Mars. SpaceX manufactures the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, as well as the Starlink satellites. Falcon 9 is a reusable two-stage rocket designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. SpaceX's achievements include the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket to reach orbit around Earth, the first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft, the first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station, the first vertical takeoff and vertical propulsive landing for an orbital rocket, the first reuse of an orbital rocket, and the first private company to send astronauts to orbit and to the International Space Station. Those are all pretty cool. SpaceX has flown the Falcon 9 series of rockets over 100 times, and they'll be sending the first private citizens to the International Space Station at the end of March. Falcon 9 is the world's first orbital class reusable rocket. Reusability allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space access. The Falcon 9 rocket mission was to launch 49 satellites into space in low Earth orbit. Now, the original launch that I was supposed to see was uh, going to be on the previous Monday, but it got delayed until Thursday. And this was the first rocket launch of any kind that I had ever witnessed. It was SpaceX's third launch, though, in just four days, with one of the launches as part of the National Reconnaissance Office, which apparently, when those launch, you can't launch anything else within like 36 hours before or after it. So I was told, at least. Unfortunately, apparently a geomagnetic storm occurred in space the following day. Geomagnetic storms occur when intense solar wind near Earth spawns shifting currents and plasmas in Earth's magnetosphere. The storm caused temperatures to rise and atmospheric density to increase, which apparently creates a more significant drag. So they had to put the satellites into safe mode where they condense down and they fly like a sheet of paper to take cover from the storm, so to speak. This means that the satellites cannot get out of their safe mode to begin their orbit raising maneuvers. So 40 of those 49 satellites have now entered back into Earth's orbit. But amazingly, their design creates zero collision risk with other satellites and also the mitigation of falling debris so that no satellite parts will strike the Earth when we least expect it. The Starlink 47 mission was destined to deploy its 49 satellites into orbit to join 1,800 other Starlink satellites already in space. SpaceX has been launching fleets of Starlink satellites, sometimes up to 60 at a time since 2019, to build a mega constellation in orbit that could number up to 42,000 satellites one day. The project is aimed at providing high-speed internet access to customers anywhere on Earth, especially in remote or underserved areas. SpaceX has said, according to SpaceX.com, the Starlink project has come under criticism by some astronomers due to the mega constellation's impact on astronomical observations, since the high number of satellites crossing the night sky can leave streaks in telescopic views. Since then, SpaceX has worked to limit the visibility of their Starlink satellites to reduce their impact on the astronomy community. I think that the most obvious innovative thing about SpaceX is that it is private. We have seen Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic also make entry into the privately funded space sphere as well. This is exciting stuff because we're looking into the world of the fictional Jetsons cartoon of yesteryear. 
Now, when Musk first got the idea for SpaceX back in 2001, he traveled to Russia to try to purchase some cheap rockets, but he turned up empty handed. And it was on the flight home that he realized that he could manufacture these rockets cheaply, applying vertical integration, cheap off the shelf parts, and innovative software, and that would cut price. What I think is so creative about this is that Musk is a guy with a vision and the actual ability to execute, especially at a time when interest in space exploration had waned. And more importantly, he looked at the landscape and figured out how to be cost effective about it, which is precisely the opposite of what our government usually does when it comes to wasteful spending programs. For more on that, Go watch my last episode about Biden's safe smoking grants that cost $30 million that actually keeps addicts addicted. There are great ways to spend money and there are stupid ways to spend money. The first three launches of the Falcon 1 rocket failed between 2006 and 2008 and financing for Tesla Motors had failed as well. So Musk was pretty much almost bankrupt at this time with his companies reportedly, and he was waking up from nightmares, screaming in physical pain at this time. However, the fourth launch attempt in 2008 was a success. So Musk split his remaining 30 million between SpaceX and Tesla. And NASA awarded SpaceX a commercial resale supply contract, thereby saving the company. That's when they went full steam ahead, developing the reusable Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon spacecraft. By 2012, NASA was awarding SpaceX a grant to see the capabilities of transporting human crew to the International Space Station. By 2012, SpaceX was valued at $1.3 billion. Now think about that. Here's a guy who invested his money and his effort and all his time into both SpaceX and Tesla, which were pretty much failures early on. And now they've become ubiquitous and profitable today. Earlier, you saw my rudimentary video of the launch. Uh, which was as cool as it was, does not even do justice to the true launch. And I knew that SpaceX would have much, much better footage. So I want to take a moment so that you can see what it looks like up close and personal as it makes his ascent into orbit. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff, Starlink 47. Vehicle is pitching down range. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. We are T plus 40 seconds into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully cleared pad 39A and carrying Power our stack of album. 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Moments ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic stresses during ascent. was Max Q. We are getting some great views of this daytime liftoff. In about a minute, we have three events happening in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff, also known as Nico, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one, also known as SES-1. During main engine cutoff, uh, this is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut down in order to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And back engine chill has started. During stage separation, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean for its landing attempt. And the second stage will continue with the third event, which is second engine start one. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to propel the second stage along with the 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Those three events should be happening uh, here in about 20 seconds. Nico. It's 
stage separation confirmed. Bearing separation confirmed. So we've had successful main engine cutoff, successful stage separation, successful second engine start on the um, second stage, and then also fairing deploy. Isn't this amazing? The way everything just went according to plan with the stage separation. And the higher the rocket goes, the more you can begin to see the curvature of the Earth. Here's what it looks like when a Falcon 9 comes back to Earth and lands. Stage one landing leg deploy. Falcon 9 has landed. This was the 106th successful landing of a Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy rocket. And it's just amazing to think how quickly and efficiently these things do what they're intended to do. Now are you ready to see what SpaceX intends to do in the future? Take a look at this rendering of what international travel could look like. Can you believe that? Anywhere you want to go in 30 minutes? That will be the future of human spaceflight. Right now they are offering rideshare, which I believe is what this next flight in March will do. If you look at SpaceX's website, you can see that you can book a flight for as little as, well, $1 million. <laughs> and I find it pretty funny that they call it rideshare because that's what Uber and Lyft are referred to. But, except in SpaceX's case, you are sharing a ride to space. <laughs>